Welcome to the show, Johan. Thank you. Let's talk a bit about the structure of the Swedish election system and find out if it's the same or different from the Israeli system. In Israel, here parties must achieve 3.25% of the national vote to gain a mandate as a party to sit in the Knesset. Is there a percentage figure required by the Swedish political parties to make it into the Swedish parliament? Yes, we have the same system, roughly, uh, but we have a, a minimum level of 4% of the uh, total national vote. But if you achieve 12% in one region, uh, you will achieve one mandate, actually. So, so if you ha have, for example, uh, one party, uh, we have uh, the new Islamist party, Nuance, uh, in Sweden. If they achieve 12% in one region, they will get one mandate in, in the parliament, although they might only have uh, 2.0 on a national level, on the total level. But it's roughly the same, yes. Well, well we have uh, 13 parties in our last uh, connection. We have 27 parties not represented. Uh, how many parties are running in this year's Swedish election, Johan? Uh, we, are, well, we have the eight parties uh, present today in the parliament, and then we have, uh, as I told you, uh, the, the new Islamist party nuance, uh, which I, I consider they have a fair chance to uh, achieve 12% in one region uh, in the middle of Sweden, uh, where they are heavily represented, uh, or in uh, they might uh, get uh, even 12% in Gothenburg, uh, the large Muslim community in Gothenburg. Uh, so, uh, but after the election, I think uh, we will have eight, uh, eight or nine, seven, eight or nine. We'll come back to that later on. But there's um, between seven and nine po uh, parties in the parliamentary system, uh, in, in, in the, the Riksdag, in the parliament. Okay, okay. But my knowledge of the latest poll seems to indicate that the Social Democrats have about 33% support at the moment, and the centre left currently have about, uh, that block has about 51% of the vote in the polling, with the centre right at about 47%. Is that correct as we speak to each other about the beginning of August, with over a month ago? Yeah, roughly, but but uh, if you look at, at, the, at the individual parties, uh, the, the red green, they have a big problem with the green party. Uh, the green party is in, uh, uh, in the po polls uh, below the four uh, percent barrier, so to say. Uh, so they might be kicked out of the parliament, uh, and if that happens, the, the conservative bloc will will gain ma a majority. Uh, as it looks uh, today. So it's pretty unsure uh, that the Green Party is actually very, very unpopular in Sweden right now uh, due to the energy crisis we have in, in Europe as a whole and in, and in particular in Sweden. Uh, about 20 years ago, we were self-sufficient uh, with energy, but we're not today. We are dependent, the south of Sweden is dependent on Russian gas actually, indirectly from, from Germany. Uh, so, uh, it's a little bit of do or die for the green red uh, alliance, so to say, to to to, to um, maintain the power, uh, maintain in power. Uh, the conservative have uh, the conservative uh, bloc has also have had a problem with the liberal party. The liberal party, under the former uh, party leader Jan Kusaboni, uh, they were. <laughs> I mean, bouncing between two and three uh, percent, but she resigned earlier this year, and now we have Mr. Johan Persson in chair uh, of the Liberal Party, and they are up and nosing on five percent right now. So it has been a major success uh, switching so so close to the election. That this has never happened before. That if you switch party leader or or the one in the party chair. Uh, so close to the election that you can gain uh, such a uh, public support in the in the polls. Actually.
actually. So, so he has been a major success for the party, and the, it seems like the Liberal Party will stay in the parliament. So everything, the, the, the outcome of the, the election is actually dependent on if the Greens uh, can remain in the parliament or not. If the Greens remain in the parliament, we will have a, a Miss, uh, Mrs. Magdalena Andersson, she will um, continue as prime minister. But if the Greens are kicked out, well, then we have a new prime minister in Ulf Kristersson. What chances does the centre right have of turning it around? I ask that because if the Justice Minister of the Social Democrat Party is not addressing rising crime, which was led to the uh, the no confident uh, motion, I would have thought this reflects badly on the leadership of uh, Magdalena Andersson, who is the current Prime Minister of Sweden and Social Democrat. Well, Ms. Magdalena Andersson, she's very, very popular uh, in Sweden. Uh, she, she is actually the most popular uh, prime minister we've had for ages. And uh, the way she handled uh, the NATO application uh, really strengthened her. And she has tried to distance herself from the party, actually. Uh, and uh, uh, be, uh, so, so you can see that what the social democrats they want to uh, get into a position where where the election is about who is going to be the prime minister, Miss Magdalena Andersson or Mr. Bulf Kristersson, instead of the social democratic party, with all uh, the, the 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 responsibility and the rise of crimes and murders and the high energy prices. Uh, the high inflation, um, a lot of problems, actually, a lot of problems uh, w which you can track down to, to the former prime minister, Mr. Stefan Löfven, uh, and the Social Democratic Party by, uh, under his le leadership. She wants, she, she tries to distance herself. Uh, he, she acts more and more like Angela Merkel. She, they even dress the same, <laughs> actually, today. So, so uh, uh, we have ha we have got a new Swedish councillor in, uh, actually. Uh, she's very, very popular, and I know her a little bit, uh, very slightly, but and I like her. But I don't like the politics, actually. And, uh, and I'm pretty average voter right now uh, that we dislike. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Morgan Johansson, the, the Minister of Justice, and he's also responsible for the migration uh, issues uh, or migration politics together with Mr. Anders Egeman. They are pretty unpopular. But somehow she has, she has managed to distance herself. Uh, very, very skilled. And uh, so uh, uh, that, that's what the Social Democrats want to do. And, but the, the Conservative uh, Block. They they want to address the crime, the rising crime. They want to address the inflation. They want to address the the the, uh, the, the actual uh, energy crisis we have. Uh, we we've seen the households. They, they've seen a double in, in energy prices in just a half a year. Uh, I look at my own uh, electric bill and I I can consider okay. We we have to adjust our our, our habits. When back home we shorter showers. Uh, we 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 kind of. Uh, put out the lights earlier and uh, we, we do what we can just to, to limit the uh, consequences of the energy crisis. And uh, th I think if you the, the big issue in the election will be uh, circling around the energy crisis, uh, the st we still have a very, very high uh, level of migration, uh, a number of mi mi migrants coming to Sweden, who is getting their asylums uh, approved, uh, asylum applications approved. Uh, and that's on the contrary to what's promised from Mr. Morgan Johansson. Uh, Morgan, Mr. Morgan Johansson, he, he, he holds that uh, while well, we have the most restrictive migration politics in Europe, but, but we don't. We, we, we're actually receiving more migrants now than in 2015. And uh, uh, so, so people, the, the, the ordinary voters, they don't get it. Uh, they don't get it. How, how does this sum up? You say some, one thing and uh, we experience something else. And uh, p people are pretty fed up paying taxes and not getting anything back. I mean, what, what we are doing now, we are, uh, our taxes is actually 
uh, they, they, they're financing uh, migration. We don't get anything back. We don't get again in increased production. We we still have a, a huge, well, very high rate of unemployment. People going home, not going to work, and uh, so. It's a little bit tricky answering uh, that, uh, how would this uh, uh, sum up, because the Social Democrats, as I said, they are positioning uh, Magdalena Andersson as uh, the, uh, the prime minister's candidate and focusing on her and her leadership, which is good, a good leadership uh, uh, from an international perspective. Uh, she, she has uh, really, really addressed the NATO issue, which is still even if we have applied now for membership, uh, it's uh, still a big question, and, and she, she gains a lot of credit uh, for credit for it. On the other hand, we have the conservative uh, bloc, so to say, and they are they are trying to to push through what what we experience every day with higher uh, electricity bills. Uh, uh, we we can. Walking in the city, we can see un unemployed migrants uh, getting more and more visible in society. And uh, we have a uh, very, very uh, uh, health care system is actually on its knees right now. This uh, will be a big issue in, in the election. So we'll see. Uh, everything is depend dependent on how the Green Party survives. Uh, the election campaign actually, because they are, they have been involved in all the most unpopular uh, decisions made by the, the government Levin uh, on the migration and on energy. And that's, I mean, that that is problems which we have to handle now and not in the future. And they have a, the government have a low credibility in those areas, actually, in those political areas, because, okay, you put us into this situation. How should you act when trying to get us out of it, this situation? And especially when we can see that you're saying something different now, but you're doing just the same. I would question, in fact, whether you have freedom of speech or the public right to know. Uh, let me highlight this by talking about the different aspect of uh, migration into Sweden that is almost like uh, clamped down or uh, disinformation. And this is crime, violent crime, including, for instance, gang rapes of Swedish girls, terrorism, gun violence. I read a uh, 2021 report that found that Sweden was the leading European country in which the number of fatal shootings per 100,000 inhabitants increased since 2000. Another one that the Swedish homicide rate was higher than any of its Nordic neighbors. Uh, the sexual offenses that have been rocketing in recent years in Sweden. So, but when we tried to discover statistics of who commits the majority of the violent crimes in Sweden, it's very difficult to get to the information and the statistics from Sweden itself. Are they native uh, Swedes or are they uh, as a result of the migrants who are still at this time a minority in Sweden? Are there any public statistics covering this uh, growing phenomenon? Because I can't find any. Why the cover up? Would you admit that the identity protection of criminals that keep the Swedish public uninformed are a deliberate political decision of the politicians that cater to and for the growing minority and therefore have a vested interest in protecting the identity of ethnic minority criminals against the best interest of the public at large. Uh, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the, it is a kind of cover up as you describe it, because if you look on the inmates in the Swedish jails, it's a majority in number, real numbers of, of migrants or children to, to, uh, to uh, my, uh, migrant parents. Uh, so, so uh, and especially on, on the high, in the high security prisons, you, you have a 
devastating majority of inmates with, with a foreign background. Uh, so it's all about the numbers. I mean, so so I, I just I say I, I would agree upon your your description that in uh, most of the violent crimes and um, uh, such as a robbery. Uh, armed robbery, uh, murder, uh, and other kind of assaults, uh, sexual assaults, and stuff like that, uh, or crimes like that. Uh, they they have a, it's a majority of uh, uh, of uh, criminals with, with a foreign background, actually. So, uh, I mean, it's a no brainer for me, actually. <laughs> so, so, but but it's. It's not not a really allowed to say in public like I do right now in uh, to the Israeli uh, public uh, or or or, or uh, audience. So uh, well, it's a no-brainer. Sure, everybody knows it. It's a, it's like the elephant in the room. Everybody knows it, but no one dare to talk about it. Sad, sad. But, um, under the watch of the Social Democrats and the leftist coalition, the outgoing prime minister admitted that, and I quote her here, segregation has been allowed to go on so far that we have a parallel societies in Sweden. We live in the same country, but in completely different realities. Johan, my opinion, I'm an outsider. This is a message of defeat. In other words, the Social Democrats, the Greens and the left have created parallel societies in Sweden. Give me your opinion of that. Yes, I agree. That's what I have had. They, they, in 2012, actually, I started to warn for this, uh, 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 I, I mean, the, this development, actually, that we had uh, as early as 2010, 2012, where we had the first really, really uh, signs of uh, like uh, the, it's a uh, area outside Stockholm. One, one, well, uh, one man, municipality called Bochirka, uh, another area uh, uh, which belongs to uh, the capital called Järvafältet, or Skistatensta and Rinkeby. They, they developed into a direction where you can actually uh, they could be defined as parallel societies, actually. And I was I was called a racist by by the party secretary and uh, uh, well a lot of other ugly words uh, they used, to, uh, and they tried really to push me out of the party. But now uh, I got right, I got right in the in the end I got right, but. It's a little bit now. The problem is so severe that we cannot. We have to address it in another way. We have uh, enclaves. We have a parallel societies which is dominated by, by Sunni Muslim radical Sunni Muslim groups. Actually, and so, so, so the problem. We could handle the problem in 2012, but now I'm 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 not sure we can handle it. Uh, it will take. A generation, at least, to, to 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 get Sweden in charge of Sweden, so to say, in these areas. Sorry. Well, I'm I'm beginning to hear somebody who prides himself on being a social democrat to uh, coming to a different opinion, but it basically parallels what we have been uh, observing in Sweden, not just here in Israel, but other places as well, about what happens when you open your doors and, and allow in an uncontrolled, unbridled migration. Uh, and part of this appeasement, uh, Johan, uh, to the growing Middle East uh, migrants has been the constant and growing anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian drumbeat. You know, look, Sweden has been anti-Israel ever since Olaf Palmer, and it became the leading anti-Israel European nation, even to the point of feeding Palestinian terrorism with unlimited amounts of Swedish money. Of course, it's not described that way in, in, in Sweden, but this is the way it happens, and we see it with the uh, contributions to the education of uh, uh, children in UNRWA refugee camps, teaching of a world without Israel, the hatred of Jews. And we see it in also the money going to welfare of the Palestinian Authority, which gets siphoned on to their pay to slay uh, uh, reward system. Johan, my prediction for Sweden is if there is no radical shift made in your September election, 
Uh, and this is a result of, let's say, st strategic studies at Mike from the Israel Institute of Strategic Studies. In 10 years' time, instead of native Swedes running the main center-left parties and the right parties, they will be led by the, migrant, the migrants who will be electing their own people to take over the established party, but they'll also be introducing their own social, cultural, religious, political parties with policies that will shock native Swedes who have surrendered, as I said at the beginning, their own traditional morality to multiculturalism. And that will be the time that native Swedes will wake up to the fact that you are sleepwalk to your own destruction. Do you agree or disagree with the basic premise? Uh, I agree um, 80%. I would agree. Uh, I, should, I agree about 80%. It's, uh, if we boil it down to this election, uh, and now uh, a little bit, uh, I, I align myself with, with, with the social democratic uh, uh, strategy here, that uh, Miss Magdalena Andersson, as a person, uh, such uh, in the way I know her, she is very, very close to uh, Mr. Joran Persson, former prime minister, who is a, a really, really big friend of the state of Israel. Uh, they are they are about the same. I know some of uh, Miss Magdalena Andersson's advisors uh, really well. I talk to them about once every fortnight or something like that. Uh, and they're very, very pro-Israel. They're not the Olof Palme. Uh, uh, they are not representing the Olof Palme politics or the Piazzoli politics or anything like that. Uh, but uh, you are right when it comes to the effects of migration. Because it was very, very close last year by the time of this last year, that uh, Stefan Levin was replaced by as exactly what you say, uh, 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 a person very, very hooked on this multiculturalism, but because this multiculturalism, it's actually feeding anti-Semitism. Anti uh, in Sweden. That's my experience. When you talk to about multiculturalism, uh, the, the first ones to lose that battle is actually the Jews and the Israelis in Sweden. Uh, but uh, Magdalena Andersson, she has, uh, she has uh, actually, she's committed to put on a fight uh, against this multiculturalist uh, parts of the Social Democratic Party, uh, but uh, she will not be able to address uh, similar movements in the Green Party or the, the Left Party or the Centre Party, uh, which is more and more likely to fall into an anti-Semitic uh, uh, kind of rhetoric and politics. And uh, I support Magdalena Andersson in her battle against the, the, this uh, identity politics. Uh, but. Uh, Soros, uh, Soros, uh, uh, it's hard to say the outcome, but uh, there is a, say, a saying actually next year, year Jerusalem, and uh, who knows, I might end up in Jerusalem. Actually, sorry, sad to say, sad to say, but uh, it has been a long battle, but we, we are losing it every day. We'll see now the 11th of September, what will be the outcome of that, but. Uh, Right. Johan, let me let me end with the, this question. How has the Ukraine war impacted Sweden politically? Sweden's applied to join NATO. Um, surely that yeah. will weaken the support for leftist parties in the next election, uh, uh, particularly if Swedes who seem to be wanting to return to what I call Swedish traditional national unity. And it's interesting for me to know what the left party, the former communist party, thinks of Russia and Putin these days. And do you think that, with Sweden applying to join NATO out of fear of communist Russia, this will negatively impact their ch uh, chances, their popularity of the left party in the next election? Uh, now, well, we're, our application to NATO is, I mean, uh, they have received it and uh, uh, Turkey has not. Uh, 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 Turkey has enabled us to, to be uh, present at the meeting uh, meetings, uh, 
uh, but they have not ratified it in the parliament. I think that will take at least one year from now. Uh, we have to wait until after the Turkish elections, actually, uh, which is about to be held in June, I think. So I think you, uh, our full membership will come at August at the earliest, or uh, August next year. So, uh, uh, but uh, this is really, really skilled of, uh, of Magdalena Andersson that she pushed NATO application in a very, very good time before the election. So the NATO application is a non-issue right now in Sweden. It has a, uh, and so, so the relations as so what's not being discussed, unless by Pierre Choury and uh, John Eliasson and Hans Nix and other more loyal Kremlins, uh, Kremlin supporters, uh, the, what, what, what we actually, so we are not discussing the left party's uh, relationship or, or with, with the Kremlin, we're not discussing the, the Green Party's. Uh, relationship with, with the Kremlin and the other uh, within that sphere. Uh, so I think uh, the NATO discussion is actually a positive discussion uh, from most uh, 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 most journalists and most politicians in Sweden. So it's an it's a non issue. And but if Magdalena Andersson had not been uh, pushed uh, the NATO application so hard, uh, that would be a, an issue for the election. And she didn't want that. She didn't want that because uh, the uh, support for NATO is more than 60%. And it, it is a, uh, a really, really important question for the Swedish voters. Myself, I'm a uh, half uh, Finnish Swede, uh, minority in Finland. My, my grandfather, he was serving as an officer uh, under Mannerheim and uh, my 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 father he was born and raised in Helsinki during the second world war we know the russians by heart we know what they are capable to uh, so uh, what what i would say is that okay we are not strong enough to defend ourselves then and, and, and nato membership is really uh, something good for for the for for, for sweden and, and so i think she, she kind of erased the nato question and, and uh, unified sweden against russia uh, earlier this year and then she kind of got that question out of the way and uh, uh, by that built herself platforms so that she, she had a possibility to win the election in september uh, Johan, explain to me and the, the viewers the symbol you've got behind you, uh, the hammer of the sink or whatever, it hardly looks to me to be a symbol that represents traditional Sweden. Ah, uh, okay, that's a cover of my first book, uh, The Islamism in Sweden. It's about the Muslim Brotherhood. I, des <clears throat> I designed it myself together with, with the author Aron Flam, uh, which I hope uh, you read, uh, this is a Swedish tiger. Uh, really, really good. He, he got uh, the uh, letter, actually. I know Aaron uh, quite well. He got a letter from the uh, 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 president of Israel, just to thank him for, for the, that book. But he designed it for me. And, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's a hammer. Uh, there's a co uh, the, the communist uh, symbol and the uh, uh, serpent uh, and uh, the colors of uh, uh, most Muslim nations' flags. So it's kind of, the, the ideologies, uh, they kind of, they meet each other. And that's what my second book, uh, which is due to be published in January, 20th of January, uh, is the plan. I show how the ideologies, they melt down to one new political force, so to say, uh, which in, uh, Europe haven't seen for decades or for for uh, for, for uh, hundreds of years, actually, how, how communism or Marxism, post-Marxism, Islamism, and the, 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 uh, uh, some uh, really, really uh, uh, heavy uh, thoughts by, from uh, uh, Martin Heidegger, who was uh, the, the philosopher of, of uh, the Nazi party, how, how they kind of meet each other and form something new. Actually. So that's the symbol. 
Well, Johan, I'll be happy to interview you about your new book in January when it's out. This is an interest of a global interest. Um, um, but earlier in the show, you told me that uh, you were 80% on the way to agreeing with me where I said about the impending future of uh, Sweden if uh, radical changes aren't made in the new election. I, uh, I would suggest that uh, had I asked you this question about four or five years ago, you would have said I was 60% right. So it seems to be going in the wrong direction. Um, it is, uh, as, I, uh, as, I, as I told you, maybe <laughs> next year Jerusalem. I don't know. Well, every time I meet Aaron, we talk about and then uh, what we salute, uh, no, when we take farewell, when we bid each other uh, farewell nowadays, we say actually next year Jerusalem. Well, or in, in my case, actually, uh, Rabat. I look forward to meeting you when you come to Israel. I'll show you some of our problems uh, when you're over here as well. But I really hope the <laughs> oncoming elections are not going to leave you when I speak to you post-election of you telling me uh, you are now 100% convinced that I, I was right. But Johan, thank you very much for sharing your political views and your observations with us on, on the show. And I look forward actually to inviting you back Post-election, let's have a post-election uh, get-together about. Yeah. Oh, well, let's schedule that, actually. Uh, I think uh, uh, either way there would be some turbulence uh, forming a new government, but but uh, around the, 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 the week after the election, I think uh, we have a lot of talk, a lot of stuff to talk about. All I can tell you, uh, Johan, is that we from Israel wish all the best for Sweden. You need a change of direction. I hope you, your Swedish voters, listeners, viewers, wake up uh, before it's too late. Uh, thank you, Johan, for being my guest uh, and uh, on, the, on The View from Israel. Thank you. Thank you.